Hi Gophers, my name is Alex Pluto and welcome to Package Main, a channel about Go. In this video, we'll be building a TCP chat server using Go, which enables clients to communicate with each other. In this live coding session, we'll be using Go Net Package, as well as we'll be working with Go routines and channels. Let's refresh our knowledge of what TCP is. TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol, is a major protocol of the Internet. It sits above the network layer and provides transport mechanism for application layer protocols such as HTTP, SMTP, IRC, etc. Let's review the functionality of our chat. Once the client connects to the server, it can use the following comments to talk to it. Let's review these comments. So they all start with slash. So slash nick name would set a name of the user slash join name would join a room or create a new room if it does exist slash rooms will just print all the rooms available slash message message will broadcast message to the all members of the room and slash quit will just disconnect from the chat server our application will consist of the following parts which will later define as types so the first one is client which will hold a name of the user current connection current room then we have a room type which will hold the list of the members of the room then we'll have comment, uh, which means actually the comment from the client to the server, such as join, nick, and all our comments from the list. Then we'll have a centralized server, which will be responsible for processing the incoming comments, as well as uh, storing rooms and clients. And we have a TCP server on top of that to accept incoming connections. So let's start by defining all the types I just mentioned. So let's start with comment type. Comment. Comment would have an ID, and let's define a type of this of this ID, which is actually int, but I prefer to, to have them as separate types. Now let's define all possible comments here. So we'll have a list of constants. For example, the first one could be cmd nick of type comment in and it's Yota, so it's zero, and the next one would be one, which is cmd, let me check, so what do you have? Join, rooms, message, quit. So join, rooms, message, quit. So what else will we have in the comment? We'll have a client, which is pointer to the client, which is a sender of this current comment. Um, we'll define this type later, later. And we'll have uh, arguments of the comment. I'll define it as a slice of strings for now. We'll see later how it will work. And yeah, let's switch to the client. Our client will be responsible for keeping the information about user, such as name, current TCP connection and current room. So let's define these properties. So the first one would, would be connection net other than the name or as we call it nick, so string. Then we'll have current room, which will be a point to a room, which can be nil by default, by default when user didn't join any room. So we'll need to define this type later. And another thing I'll add is uh, comments, which will be a send only ch uh, channel of type comment. That's where all comments will go, and then they will be later sent to the server. But it's not comment ID, it's, it's just comment. Now let's define our room type. Each room will have a name, which is a string, and list of members, which I'll define as a map, where the key would be the address of the uh, client, and then we'll have a pointer to the client. Using the remote address as a unique map key, maybe not the optimal solution, but it works in our example. Now let's define a server, which will be our central place to manage all this information. 
so type server our server will store a list of rooms it should be a map a key string which is the name of the room and pointer to the room as well it will have a single channel commons As well, it will have a single channel comments where all comments from all clients will, will be sent to. As well, it will have a single channel comments, so chain comment, where all the messages from all the clients will be sent to. And let's write a small helper function to initialize new server so new server will return the pointer to the server and we need to initialize maps and channels so make make this map and comments make this so we defined all our skeletons of of this program and now let's build the tcp server itself let's create a main.go file package main but we used chat before so yeah actually we need to go back to all of this and change this to main so it will be executable right. Oops. and now let's define our function main so let's initialize our server first. So S will be new server. Now let's bin to the port four times eight. So listener error equal net dot listen. And we'll have TCP and port 8888. Of course, let's check for the error. Let's just use log fatal f enable to start server. Error. And we need to close our listener in the end. So, listener close. And let's print some log message so log print f started server on four times eight now we'll start an endless loop for accepting incoming connection so connection error would be listener dot accept so which will return the client connection and error and if error equal nil I just print the error unable to accept connection and in this case let's just continue so we don't quit we just accept the next connection and once client has connected we should initialize the client uh, create the new client type as well we should start reading for the client messages so i'll add a new function to our server instance called new client where we'll pass the the connection and this will be a blocking function so i'll do this as goroutine now we need to implement the new client so let's go to our server let's add a new server function new client with connection so net connection and let's print some message first new client has connected and let's print the remote address of the connection so connection dot remote address dot string 
and let's initialize the client. Set a pointer to the client type. Um, so we have connection as connection. Then nick, since we don't have username yet, we do it as anonymous. What else did we have in the client? We had room, which is nil, so we don't need to initialize this, and the send only channel for the commands. And that and here we'll pass the channel from the server object, so server.commands. So comments will go from the client to the server using this uh, channel as channels are reference types. So we do this. Oops. All right, it was a mistake here. Connection is not net, it's net.connection. And after we initialized our client, we should start reading for the messages here. So it will be blocking for loop. And let's uh, define it under the client type. So I'll go back to the client and um, I'll create a new function read input. It should be a blocking function, but uh, it's not a problem for us because in this server, now it's mango, we call it as go routine. So new client will be blocking as well as read input will be blocking, but each client will have a separate go routine. So here we'll have an endless loop and let's get the message and error from the connection. The messages will be separated by line. So what we can do, we can have Buffy a new reader from the client connection, and then we can read string, as I remember, by slash n. And yeah, it's a byte, so we can do like this. Let's check. So if error not new, let's just quit from this function. Uh, we can log a message here, but it means that probably something happened with connection, probably connection was closed, and we don't want to continue. So our message is string. What we want to do here is we want to remove all the new lines from this message. So we can do strings dot trim, I pass message, and we can do slash r slash n here. Now, in order to build the specific command, we need to parse it from the message. Um, and what we can do, we can define arguments as, we can split the string by, um, right, strings, split um, message and split by the space. And the first, um, the first element of this slice would be our comment. So our comment is, and let's remove any spaces of there. So trim space from the arguments, the first element. And now we can see, we can check what the comment client sent. So switch CMD. And here we'll define all our comments we had in the list before. So the first one would be Nick. So as I remember, join the room, list of the room, send a message to the room, quit, and default we need to to probably throw some error or even tell user that this common is not supported. We will add a function to our client, probably error, where we can send any error. So errors, new, um, it's actually, we need fmt rf unknown comment and cmd. So we don't know this comment. Now let's uh, call this function. So it will be under client type error. And here we would need to write the message to our client. And we can do this by using the write function of the connection which accepts bytes, so we can transform error to bytes, or sorry, string to bytes. Um, let's do something like error, error, and let's uh, add slash n. 
Let's also write a similar function, but for for normal messages. So the message would be string, and we'll write message here. And for example, normal messages will start with this sign. Our client won't process the messages. It will send the comments to the server, and server will do the rest. So what we need to do is for each comment here, we need to send a message to the comments channel under our client type. Uh, and then it will be processed by the server. Um, so in, in case of Nick, uh, we can do C comments and we'll send um, a comment. ID will be CMD Nick. So what we defined before, C will be sorry client will be C and we send a list of arguments as here. And now let's repeat the similar but for all the comments. So join rooms message quit. Um, the difference is uh, ID. So CMD join so CMD rooms cmd message and cmd quit so now as our client sends the messages or the comments to the channel comments we need to read them on the server side so on the server side yeah we actually forgot to call here c read input right so the blocking function which we just wrote and now our server will have a function run which will be as well blocking function to accept all incoming comments. So run. And here we'll read any incoming comments. So for CMD range over S comments. And we can now call this from our main.go file. So in the background so s dot run and and here we will process all the comments and do what we need to do with them similar as on the client side we would use a switch command by id and for example if it's cmd nick we would call nick function and for each comment, we'll have this similar function. So let's remember we had five. So join will be, we'll have join function. Then we'll have rooms, rooms, um, message, message, and quit. Now we just need to send arguments here. So we can send the whole command or just the client and the next argument. I'll make it easy for now. Um, I'll just send a CMD client to all of them. And actually the arguments also to all of them. That's probably all that we need. Now what's left is to define all of the functions and write the business logic. Mm, and we can't use rooms here because rooms is a field of our server type. So we'll call it list rooms. And let's start with Nick. So under the server, we have a Nick function. Um, Client, oh, let's just use C, client, args, slice of strings. Let's just copy paste it. So we have form two, three, four, five. Join list rooms, message, quit. So our nick function is the easiest probably. We just need to, to set the nickname of the user 
which will be the second element of the arc. So the first one is comment, then the second we assume its name. Uh, let's skip all the validation for now. And then let's also send some message to the user. So see message as string. So um, sprint f and do something. All right, I will call you uh, C Nick. Now let's implement the comment join. So in join, we need to check if uh, room already exists. So if not, we should create the room. And in any case, we should add a current user to the list of the members of the room. So let's check first if room exists. So rooms under the name and yeah let's assume that room name is similar as we do with username so let's define room name arcs so let's check and if it doesn't exist let let's create it so we will override our r which is uh, room name room name and then we should initialize our map, the list of members, which is make map from, let me just copy it from here. And now let's add it to the, to the rooms map. So from room name equal R. And in any case, we, we are adding current client to the, um, rooms members list and since r is pointer so we can just do it right on the r so members and address will be our client address so remote mm, no, connection remote address um I remember if it's string or just remote address um equal c and now let's mark on the client side uh, the current room so equal r but just before doing this we also need to make sure that uh, we need to remove this user from the members list of of the old room if the user was part of it so we can check here if c room is not equal equal new so we need to quit from the room and actually i'll mark it as a separate function because we'll probably need to use it when we when user quits so let's define this function server quit current room and the argument will will be the current client and yeah let's move this check there now let's delete this user from the members list. So C room members, right? So we can use delete function, delete C root members, and then C connection remote address. So we removed the user from the list. Also, we can broadcast to all existing members of the room that user has left. So we can do C room and then broadcast function, which doesn't exist yet. Uh, so we'll C would be a sender and then some message. So, I'm oh, sorry, uh, sprintf. And then, for example, name of the user has left the room. And send nick. Now, our room doesn't have this function yet. So, let's go and implement this. So, function on room broadcast so uh, sender first client and message string now let's loop over the all members of, of, of the room so address member range I members now, why I keep address here? Because we we want to make sure that we don't send the message to the uh, sender as well. So we need to skip it. Uh, let's just check if address is not equal sender. 
dot connection dot remote address. Then we send a message to the member, so it's just m dot message message. Now let's go back to our server. Uh, since we implemented this quit current room, we do it right before assigning the room to the user. So as quit current room uh, client. Yeah, and let's fix this error. Now we can also use broadcast function to notify current room that someone has joined the room. So we can use r dot broadcast. Um, Center is client and then message as well as printf has joined the room and it's scenic. And let's also send a confirmation message to the current user saying um, welcome to the room or something. So also printf welcome to and room name which is r dot name now this function is complete so let's uh, review what it does so we get the room name from the from the argument so from the uh, client message which is the second argument uh, which goes after slash join space then we check if um, the room exists with this name and if it doesn't we will create a new room and add it to the server rooms property then we add current client uh, to the list of the members uh, then we quit the current room we assign new room to the client and we broadcast message to the room and we send message to the client uh, now let's continue with the rest of the list so uh, list rooms all right so here we just need to loop all the rooms and send message to the user so user knows which room uh, he or she may join so let's define rooms as a slice of strings and to actually name is a key so name range as rooms and rooms equal append rooms name and send this message to the client so see message Available rooms are, and then join this slice of so strings to join mm, list of rooms and separator will be a comma. So, message function just uh, broadcasts the message to the room members, and here we need to check if um, client room is not nil which may be the case. So if C room equal nil, we can, we can use our C error function. So errors new, you must join the room first, right? And then just return from here. Otherwise we can use C, C room dot broadcast, send is client. And then message so we have this list of arcs which is slice but then we need to join them and omit the first argument which is a, uh, a slash message command so we can use strings join and now we can get all arguments starting from index one so from one to length of arguments uh, so it's here and yeah, we had a space because we split by space before. And also let's add here who actually sent this message. So we can use scenic and something like this. Now the last function is quit. Let's print some log message first, saying that client has disconnected. So client is connected. And let's print the connection address. So connection remote address string as i said before we can use our quit current room here so we uh, remove this client from the members list of the room so as quit room client then we can say some 
exit message to the client itself. So message set to see you go and close the connection. So connection dot close. I think our program is ready now and let's go and review it step by step. So let's start from main.go file. Um, here we initialized our main centralized server, which will be responsible for all the incoming comments, managing the state of the rooms. Um, and we execute um, run function in the background, which will be doing this. We start our TCP server. Um, we accept all new clients. So connection will be the connection of the current client and we initialize client itself. So by default, it has anonymous name, which we can change later. Comments will be a channel um, that will be used to send comments from the client to the server. And read input function, also blocking function with endless loop, which reads the input of the user, then parses the input, gets the comment name. Um, and if it found uh, available comment, it will just send a message to the channel. If not, we'll send message to the user. Now, when messages are sent to this comments channel, they will be received by the run function. So here's a blocking loop to get all the comments and depends on the comment ID, execute them. So we can change the nickname, uh, which will set a just name and we'll send something to user. User can join the room, which will do some logic here. Uh, we can list the rooms, send message to the current room and quit the chat. Now it's time to build it, test it and see how it works. So I have three tabs open here. The first one will be using for the server itself to run it. The second will be the client A and the third one will be client B. So let's uh, build our server and run it. So go build uh, dot and I think it worked well. Uh, and let's run chat. So we get this message started server on four times eight. Now let's try to connect uh, client A. So we'll be using telnet command line tool. So telnet uh, host, localhost and the port. All right, now we can see that client has connected. Let's see if our comments work. So let's try with something non-existing. So go, unknown comment go. All right, let's give our user a name. So I'll pick a name, John. All right, I'll call you John. Um, let's join the room. We should actually create it because um, it doesn't exist. So join general. Um, and now let's um let's connect with client b so it can be client on the different machine but it's all on local host right now so local host oh one time eight right new client has connected as you can see right now the remote address is actually different even i, I connect from the same machine so it works for now let's also pick a name um jack and now for example, I want to know which rooms do we have. So I'll call the rooms and right, we'll have a general room so I can join general. Uh, as you can see here, it says Jack has joined the room. And now let's send let's send a message to the room. Hi, Ron. And yeah, John received the message from, from Jack. There can be more people here. All right. Jack doesn't want to chat anymore, so I'll just quit. Jack has left the room, client has disconnected. Um, and you can do here as well. I would like to highlight that this program is not final yet. It misses a lot of very important items. And I did this intentionally so the video doesn't become too long. The first one is the validation of the message body, such as validation of the body size, arguments, comments. We made some shortcuts here. The second one is state. Our current server is stateless, meaning if it shuts down, all connections will be closed. It can also be accommodated with a graceful shutdown. Feel free to submit a pull request with improvements of this chat server. I'll leave the link to the repository in the description of the video. 
I hope it was interesting and helpful and see you later.